I have nothing to disclose. It is likely that everyone at this meeting knows that diabetes is becoming an epidemic, with an estimated one in three Americans affected by the year 2050. While most patients will face a plethora of different complications, the most common is diabetic bladder dysfunction, or DBD, which affects up to 87% of all diabetic patients. Despite the prevalence of this complication, there are currently no targeted therapies for it. Naively, one expects that if you simply get your blood sugar under control, you can prevent this complication. But, in fact, this does not reduce the risk of urinary incontinence, according to the very comprehensive epidemiology of diabetes intervention and complication study. Thus, something else must be mediating this problem. It turns out that diabetes is more than just high blood sugar. It's a metabolic disorder that causes inflammation in many different tissues. Recent breakthroughs in understanding inflammation have identified a multimeric structure that sits at the center of it all called the NLRP3 inflammasome. NLRP3 is a nod-like receptor that recognizes many different molecules known collectively as damage-associated molecular patterns, or DAMPs, which are released by damaged cells. Turns out some well-known DAMPs are also metabolic byproducts known to be quite high in diabetes, such as MSU, HMGB1, and ceramide. Activation of NLRP3 by these stamps results in the cleavage and release of pro-inflammatory cytokines, chief among them IL-1 beta. Recently, our lab, and now several others, have shown NLRP3 to be present in the urethelia, where it is involved in many benign neurological diseases characterized by inflammation, including diabetes. We have made these observations, previously and today, using the Akita mouse, which has a mutation in the insulin 2 gene and thus is a good genetic model of type 1 diabetes. We chose these models because they had been previously used to study DVD, but we also gave it a twist. That twist was breeding the Akita mouse with an NLRP3 knockout strain to generate four important genotypes. These are non-diabetic and diabetic mice with either normal NLRP3 or with NLRP3 knocked out. In using these mice, we were very interested to know if they recapitulate the diabetic progression of DVD. You see, contemporary thinking suggested DVD is progressive, that it starts out as an overactive light bladder, but it progresses to an underactive phenotype. Yet many models of DVD do not show the early overactive phenotype, especially the widely used streptozoidism model. Now, I don't have time to go over our previous work, but it is important for you to know that at 15 weeks, we showed that bladder inflammation was present, that an overactive phenotype was apparent, and that all these changes require NLRP3. They were not present in the diabetic mice with NLRP3 knocked out. Thus, the experimental questions in the present project were, is there an underactive bladder phenotype in the Akita mice, and is this dependent upon NLRP3? So, for this, we had to look at more extended time points, and I'll show you to data from 30-week mice. But before going further, it's important to know that blood glucose is not affected by the presence or absence of NLRP3. Here you can see a significant increase in the diabetic mice, the blue bars, regardless of whether NLRP3 was in a wild-type configuration or whether it was knocked out. Since we propose that inflammation is driving DBD, it was also important to know bladders were inflamed at 30 weeks and NLRP3 was the driving force. To address this, we utilized the Evans Blue assay, whereby Evans Blue dye injected IV leaks into tissues at a rate equivalent to extravasation of immune cells thus reflecting inflammation. As you can see, diabetes causes a significant increase in Evans Blue extravasation in mice with normal NLRP3, showing that inflammation was present. But there was no change in mice when NLRP3 was knocked out, suggesting this increase was indeed dependent upon NLRP3. Finally, we asked if there was an underactive phenotype in the mice at 30 weeks, and we assessed this by urodynamics. As you can see, when NLRP3 was intact, the diabetic animals displayed an increase in warded volume coupled with a decrease in urinary frequency and an increase in PVR, highly suggestive of an underactive phenotype. Importantly, these changes were not seen in the knockout mice, suggesting NLRP3 is required for this change. In conclusion, we have shown that the Akita diabetic mice progresses from overactive bladder to underactive bladder and this provides more evidence that there is a central role for NLRB3 in the development and progression of diabetic bladder dysfunction. Thank you very much.